This is Seneca Dunmore, the Pint Size Powerhouse, and I'm on The Real Deal with my boy, Akil. <laughs>
Yeah, you have to learn how to tell a story. I would tell people. You tell the story about the verse. Mm hmm. Mm hmm. Real, it's just motiv- so you're a motivational speaker, but not in church, basically. Mm hmm. Could you do it? You think you could be a, a preacher? You know, that's funny. People always ask me that. I, really? You know, I definitely think I have the gift, gift of evangelism, which is basically preaching. You know, you're just mm-hmm. giving people a good word and bringing them to the knowledge of Christ. So, yeah, I could do it. And I, it's crazy that religion is such a. a touchy subject like people don't i lost you know i lost friends by talking about religion really yes well yeah i mean i i get that you, yeah you, it's you, a you have you had friends that and then y'all had a, a disagreement and you was like i can't be friends with you no more you know i i can't remember a time where we've just fallen out because of it because i mean i have girlfriends who are buddhist and hindu and or not religious at all oh uh, yeah and i have friends who are atheists so yeah, yeah. come but one that, come all and it wouldn't it wouldn't do anything to you it wouldn't harm you right no 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 i oh. mean I, I i don't feel like i have to beat my you know beat people over the head yes, with yeah. what i believe it's I what i believe that. and it ain't gonna change you know it's like i'm yeah. not gonna be quiet about it and if it offends you i'm sorry i don't get that like i had i lost a couple of friends in the past that wow. they want to be friends with me because i'm not religious i never said i ain't believing i just said i'm not religious yeah I'm spiritual well there's yeah there's a difference you know yeah i was like dude like Quick story, like I remember my dad passed away. I remember the, like that weekend after, I was at a, I was in a hotel room, like at, at a suite. I forgot the name of this uh, hotel. I think it was Comfort Suites or something. One okay. Of them. And I was with a, uh, I was with a friend of mine, and <laughs> we, it was like right after he, you know, he passed and everything. Mm-hmm. I swear to God, first first thing I seen, I was laying on the bed. There's like a mirror on the on the wall. Okay. I saw like this white string. I promise you, hmm. I was like, whoa the fuck was that so then i get in the shower like 15 minutes later mm-hmm. you know like the hair the blow dryer the hair dryer thing, okay it's on the wall right door's locked i'm in the shower all of a sudden it falls i said bro <laughs> come on dog like is he telling me a sign because mm-hmm. it's like right after he passed away you know a lot of things mm-hmm. you know spiritual stuff i'm like yo this is like this is crazy right now right so i was like damn you know what i'm saying Cause that's how like that's why that's how i became spiritual yeah, I never. I, I grew up in the church. I grew up going to a Christian school since I was in kindergarten, all oh, the way okay. to fifth grade, and I was always in the church house every day mm. of the week since I was in kindergarten. And I just some day one day I just like damn they like really just grew out of it. I was like man, it's just you know I just got older and you know I started moving around and right. didn't have time to go to church every Sunday. Okay, but I feel like you know I feel like person on. It's cool for a person to go to church every day or every Sunday. That's right, cool. I, if that's I, I what they choose to do. Yeah, but right. I know personally I can't just go every Sunday because I'm tired from Saturday. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? I'm, t- I'm really – I hate people – this is one thing I hate when people do this. It's always it's always Christians. Okay. They will say, you going to hell. How you know? How you know where I'm going? Mm. If you, you, you can't. If you don't go to church, you're going to hell. What? Like, did the guy come down and tell you, tell that motherfucker he going to hell? <laughs> <laughs> like bro, how I'm like I hate when people do that. Mm-hmm. Then another thing is like I a thing I learned too. And I used to do it when I was younger. People would ask me, "What is your religion?" Mm-hmm. I was just like Christian. I would just blurt out Christian, mm-hmm. and I knew I really wasn't you know into religion like that. And it's always like like with black people, we always just say Christian for no reason. When it comes to push gonna shove, mm-hmm. that's why they ask you Christian. How you feel about that? Like when people, have you ever had that encounter before? If you ask somebody, then you know, like, this motherfucker lying. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Girl. But, I, you know, I'm more concerned with relationship versus religion. You know, religion to me is just a bunch of traditions and things that people get caught up in. That has nothing to do with your relationship with God, you know? Yeah. So. I think it's made to separate people. That's my belief. Well, Off yeah. a book I read. I just read it. I read a book. It was like, religion is made to have all non-Jews go against each other. Because you always hear, like, war on religion and things like mm-hmm. that. Like a war on it. But I just, I just feel like it's not a... Uh, it's a, it's a separation thing. Yeah. You know, you got one group of people right here, another group, and another group, and you, right. you fight, you bicker. Divide ah, my religion's better than yours. Uh-huh. That's how it is. That's how I look at it. Yeah, that whole divide and conquer mentality. So how you feel about doing Harvard? Okay, first of all, you say you're from Houston. Yes, born and raised. Was you affected by Harvard? I wasn't, thank God. Really? Yeah, literally. I know. My neighborhood was, um, I mean, we got rain, but... No flooding in the neighborhood. We couldn't get out of the neighborhood because the main streets were flooded. But yeah, no. How, how you feel when? Why you feel when Joel Osteen was getting that backlash with the Lakewood? He won't let people in. 
You know, it's funny because I always tell people you never know the situation, right? So I can't judge this man based on him not moving as quickly as everybody wanted him to. When you're running uh, an institution of that magnitude, it's hard to just start to, you know, bring people together. I mean, you got to have security. You got to have all these things in place. That's that's a large. He was worried. I heard he was worried about people stealing. Nah, yeah, I, I would be too. It's like it's <laughs> it was it was like that. Mo- it's like the mm-hmm. moment when like if you would if if a man is with a woman and a fire go out, boom, fire explosion. The woman's gonna look at the man like, oh, mm, mm, <laughs> "What are you mm, gonna do? What you gonna do?" And mm-hmm. I feel like everybody in Houston was like, "Hold on, there's a big ass complex right here on 59 mm-hmm. and Greenbrier called Lakewood, formerly known as Compact Center." Mm-hmm. Joel Osteen at the top preacher in the nation right he has the biggest church in the nation motherfucker why you ain't open this church that's how people was looking oh yeah of they course. was like oh, mm, 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 what you gonna do <laughs> yeah and he ain't he ain't let nobody in it well i don't think he let nobody in period but he didn't he, he knew he was getting backlash so then all of a sudden then he, he gets on social media yeah. and makes his excuses people was like we ain't trying to hear that you know what i'm saying mm-hmm. and i felt them. i was like man like Joe, I'm, I'm, but at the same time. Well, I'm glad I'm, he did. You know, I feel like that's only right if you call your man yourself a, you a man of God. You know, what that, God do? Yeah, people need Open the help. Arms. Yeah, but I think the logistics around it, in terms of how quickly he opened it, and I, I, I could care less about that. Yeah. He did it, but after all the backlash. Well, yeah, I mean. That's potato, how I look at it. Potato, potato. You know, maybe, you know maybe, <laughs> to me, it's just semantics and we logistics. We gotta think about it. He was probably flooded out. You yeah, know, he probably stayed. Yeah, it's like who drive. knows if he wasn't able to he get don't there. Stay there. Right. You know, yeah. it's a big ass church. To me, it's a lot of people. I mean, shit, mm-hmm. it's a lot of people. Yeah. What, 15,000? I'm, I'm sure more than that. Can you imagine the bucket that's going around? Like, how does the bucket go around to everybody in the stadium? <laughs> you Listen, know, in the church, it's like, you can pass Right. It I think they way more sophisticated. They than probably that. got an they app. Probably, yeah, they Lakewood probably got app. apps and all kind of stuff that they can take those payments. So, yeah. Can you imagine the tip money he getting? <laughs> oh my god! Oh, I'll be thinking about that. Like when it came to, when it comes to church and pre- preachers, I I just look at it as like these preachers got to give a good sermon. The better your sermon, the bigger the tip is. Mm. The bigger, the better the service at a restaurant. Your wait, your waiter or waitress give you the right. bigger the tip. Yeah, that's how it is. Tip your bartender, tip your waitress, tip your preacher. Mm-hmm. If you have a bad sermon, I will give him like three two dollars. But if he's great and he hit he hit the spot, oh he getting twenty. Imagine hit the spot on everybody in there. 15,000 times 20. Right. Anybody know that? <laughs> no. 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 Well, imagine that's a lot of money. It is. You know what I'm saying? Like, dude, like, I, I can see why he getting the backlash, though. But I can understand his side mm-hmm. at the end of the day. But I'm going to ask you this. Now you're a motivational speaker. Yes. Was you ever shy, like, talking in a big crowd? I, before? Can't, I can't remember a time that I was. So you always like. Yeah, I've always been comfortable in front of a crowd, comfortable in front of people. I'm an extrovert. I'm a natural extrovert, so I'm energized by people. So mm-hmm. that type of stuff comes really easy for me. Because I only ask that because, you know, a lot of people that I heard, and it's like me too as well, like I used to always be shy. Okay. And then like talk. I ain't like talking in front of like five people. Mm. I couldn't talk in front of everybody in the house. But, you know, a lot of people that's like entertaining and outgoing now. Right. They used to be shy. True. And now people find what they want to do in life and they could be, they have confidence. Yeah. So, I mean, you look at people like Michael Jackson and Janet who are naturally like introverted, but that's their domain. That stage is their territory. So they come alive when they're there. Yeah. But when they're off stage, they're very, you know, reserved and, you know, conservative. But yeah, when you get into your your domain, your, your element, it's easy. Really? Yeah, because I grew up. I grew out of the I grew out the shyness in 2014. Okay. Grew out of it in 2014. I did like a presentation in class, and it's crazy about the Illuminati. It's hmm. crazy, right? And I was temp- yeah, I was late I was late for a class, and then I asked about like some type of project. Like, damn, what I'm gonna talk about? Right. Did I, I thought I was gonna bomb it, but I didn't. I was like, shit, I knocked that shit out. Ever since then, whew, years later, I'm doing this. I, you couldn't tell me to get on the mic. I would be scared as hell. Okay. When I, if I cannot get in front of an auditorium now, eh, it'd be hard. It'd be nervous as hell. Mm-hmm. It'd be my first time. But 
But you know, that's how a lot of people are though. That's why I asked you that because a lot of people do tend to be shy, you know, mm-hmm. they're introverts. But then when they get out, they you know they go into they whatever they do like entertainers. That's like their sanctuary. That's like their that's right. Yeah, the ground. So that's why that's why I asked that because I'm I'm the same way. Okay. So I'm actually about this person right here. <laughs> she told me about you. How 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 did y'all meet? At uh, the School of Communications at Texas Southern University. She, she is you. Yeah, I was speaking at uh, Clyde Duncan's professional development class. How was she? How was she when you first met her? She oh, was she's, a good person? Yeah, yeah, absolutely. Uh-huh. Good, per- good she, person. Good people. You know, I can't say something. <laughs> yeah, you can say something. You can say something. Yeah, she's good people. What you want to say? I'm good people. You heard me. Mm-hmm. Good people. Yeah, you ain't got to tell you. You can tell me the real, <laughs> the real deal, right? Like, like ah, she was all right. You remember I told her she was good? She was all right. Yeah, nah, I'm good not, people. But nah, I, say, I, I, know you, uh, I know you big on sports, though. What you uh, what you, what you watch the most, football, basketball? Uh, probably football. Football. Who your team? You know, I don't really have a team. I'm, like, I, I'm always rooting for the Texans. I, I'll mm. go down to Dallas and watch the games there because I love their stadium. Oh, you been you been you mm-hmm. been there before? Oh yeah, I, been. I, I still haven't been to Dallas yet. Oh really? They have a phenomenal stadium. So For real? yeah, yeah, I know I know the stadium is nice, but I never been to the city. I always drove through it. Oh okay. But never been to Dallas. How is it out there? Is it nice? Yeah, I mean it's a it's a great place. I like it. You being political? Well, what's the word? What, what, you, what you like it? You know, I've always I'm always there on business, so oh, okay. I haven't had a chance to like really kick it. The only time I've really kicked it is like when I'm going out there for Dallas Cowboys games. I'll just stay in Houston. If I have a reason to go, I'll go. I never had a reason to just go to Dallas. Okay. But I want to go one day because everybody goes there. Yeah. Every, everybody been there at least once. Yeah, people seem to love it. So. I know Monday been there. You been there. Mm-hmm. I, I, I'm, out, I'm out of luck. Mm-hmm. I'm out of luck. But now I'm, a, I'm happy this season because my team won a Super Bowl. The Eagles. <laughs> Fly, yeah. Eagles. Fly, goddamn. I, I didn't know we was going to do it. Mm-hmm. I didn't know. But I like the Texans, too. Yeah, but the Eagles is my, you know, it's my my team I ride with. Right, because they came before the Texans, obviously. So, mm-hmm. yeah, got, got to ride with them. What about basketball? I love basketball. I mean, I love watching Steph Curry. He's amazing. I love the LeBrons of the world. There you go. That's the that's who you say first. Yeah, LeBron Dan Curry. Yeah, yeah. Yep. I do, I definitely have a lot of respect for those LeBron guys. Over, LeBron over the Rockets, right? <laughs> Right. I mean, the Rockets, Rockets are doing well they're this doing. season. They are like blowing it out of the water, so I'm I'm excited. They, they are eight, you know, they cool. Yeah. But wait till they put them boys on the East. LeBron, though. you see, we see, we got our team now. We balling now. Yeah. Huh. You know, I'm happy. At first, I was pissed. I was like, man, what we doing? Mm-hmm. Now I'm like, all right. Now we getting to our to our rhythm. Right. So I see you was on Afro Vibes. Uh-huh. How was that? It was great. I have a girlfriend named Misha Granado who had a show called um, Golden Hughes. And so I was able to talk about what I do and all that good stuff. So I loved it. It was a great show. She's a beautiful spirit. So it was easy to interview with her. How you met, how you, how you met up with her? Like you've been to it before the radio? Or? Yeah, she and I actually met through like social media. We were following each other and one day just kind of made the connection like, hey, let's go have coffee or meet up. And so we made that connection and we've been friends ever since. And how to... Uh... How did the conversation go as far as like the Afro Vibe show? Like, I'm, how is the format of the show? Like, what you when you was on, like it was catered to the motivational since you do that. Basically. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Talking about what I do. Um, at the time, I was working on a conference uh, mm-hmm. called The Power of Positioning, yeah. and uh, so we were talking about that, kind of doing some promotional material for the conference and all that good stuff. So yeah, it was cool. Oh, I loved it. I was I seen your Instagram. I seen it. I told you this. It was it's more like on the you know black power soul <laughs> natural. You know what I'm saying? You know you go to certain pages. It's like you uh-huh. can tell top person they'll buy like the profile, mm-hmm. and then some you can't. But I could tell straight up. And then I meet you. Mm-hmm. It's like I get this soul sister vibe, soul which is pretty sister. dope. <laughs> <laughs> That's why I asked you, do you go to Alley Cat? It's like, she like she go to Alley Cat. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? I ain't want to assume wrong. Mm-hmm. You know what I'm saying? But I was I was right. Yeah. I was right. I'm definitely about my people. What you laughing at? <laughs> she, 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 she always do this to me. Yeah. Every time. Now we got class. I got to do, I got to deal with this shit every time. That's too yeah. funny. <laughs> I got to, she got to watch her. So you going to tell me the real school. Cause I know you. Yeah, she cool. She, she all right. She Don't give her all that crap. Yeah, it's good people. People. I G H T. 
<laughs> All right, see my boy Monday. He was just cool. We just chill. We just post up. Mm-hmm. Just cooling. This right here. See her. You know, she already getting all. She getting popular now on YouTube. When, well, I, had Amy, when I had Amos on her, people laughing at how many? How many? One, two, three. And she, you know, she now she getting her flame. So mm. fame. She getting, <laughs> she, getting, she getting her fame now. Nah. Oh, okay. Now nah, she now nah, she thinks she she up there. That see, is what, Monday, that's we, what it's all about. See, we just we just cool it. We just laid back. Cool. Mm-hmm. Cut, you see? Right. I had to buy my own. I had to own buy my own water bottle. People. <laughs> she won't. She. It's cool though. Mhm. Anyway, you seen the shooting with the uh, Florida? You know, it was like I saw it come across my phone or whatever, and I was like, "What is going on?" Another and then I one. saw something today that said like every week since twenty eight, you know, since the new year has started, there's been a eighteen of them a shooting at a school, and I was like. Where have we been, and what is going on? Yeah, it's like, chill. You can't even send your children to school and be safe. It's like yeah, every week, weeks. every week. Wow. Yeah, yeah, eighteen shows. I mean, eighteen shows. Eighteen shootings have happened. Yeah, it's crazy. My, that gonna probably hate me when I say this. Uh oh. I know. When I seen the, when I seen it on YouTube, and I seen the ABC News mm-hmm. video about the shooting i heard the father talk about his daughter it was the worst nightmare okay you know oh my gosh but when i heard his voice i'm like why you don't sound why you sound so calm you know what i'm saying you know, you know if you had a if you had a child mm-hmm. i know i got two boys if, I, if my boy is at school and they shooting i'm not trying to get interviewed right now i'm trying to go i'm trying to see what the hell's going on with, with my kid at mm-hmm. the school Fuck the interview. You know what I'm saying? Mm. And you sound so calm. You're not like, oh, I'm a, you know, I ain't, fuck that. I don't care about no interview. Mm-hmm. To me, when I see these shootings, I just think of it as, oh, this shit is, it's just full gazer to me. It's just a hoax. I'm not saying every shooting is rigged. Mm. It's fake. But you got to be, you got to be honest with yourself and just be like, hold on. Let's just take 10 steps back. Why we haven't seen any footages? No pictures of these people dead on, in the classrooms. Can you know, put it like this? When you see like these bombings and people dying, mm-hmm. you're going to see somebody recording something. Mm-hmm. You're going to see some pictures. Think about all these shootings. We haven't seen not one video or picture. All we see is the helicopter view, images of people crying. You know what I'm saying? We don't see like the real stuff. So mm-hmm. we got right, Let's just think back. Let's just take 10 steps back and just think about this. Can some of this be hoax? Because we can't believe everything the news tell us. I would hope not. I mean, I won't be, I, I'm telling you. That's a dirty joke if it is. Let's think about it. 18 shootings. Now, one rule change to the schools. Let's get more security. What's security at? Mm-hmm. If you've seen the shooting happen like that every every what, every week since 2018. Right. You know, what, what's really going on? Yeah. I just think it's a hope. That's just me being a conspiracy person. Right. You know what I'm saying? Me being a conspiracy guy, I ain't going to be like, hold on, bro. Let me connect the dots here. Is this really, is this real? This is a hoax. Hmm. Because that was a, if that was fake, he was on the phone. That was a, that was a bad acting job. I'm like, bro, your daughter's in a, clo- a closet in school. Come on, man. I To me, I just don't believe you. Okay. That's just me. That's just me. I want to see pictures. I want to see evidence. I'm an evidence guy. Okay. I want to see evidence if people, because you know, everybody got phones. If it's a high school and something's going on, mm-hmm. they're going to be, they got to be some one student Snapchatting or Instagram or something like the aftermath. Okay. Like, oh my gosh, dog, look what just happened. Yeah. That's just me. That's just how I look at it. I don't know if you're a conspiracy person. I don't know. Not necessarily. No. I mean, <laughs> I don't know. You gotta I, ask uh, yeah, no. I, I mean, I literally haven't even seen it on TV yet. I've been so oh, busy. Oh, so you really like, ain't seen nothing about no, it? No, I just saw the headlines come across well, my phone or whatever. The typical, the typical shooting. Uh, he was bullied. He has mental disorder. The smoke grenade, hand grenade. That's my thing. How you get? How the hell do you get all these goddamn Call of Duty weapons? Mm. Smoke hand grenades. Smoke yeah. grenades. Come. Yeah. Motherfucker, 19 years old with all these goddamn weapons. Yeah, that's crazy. And a, a AR, hand grenades, smoke. Come on, man. That's a lot. And you got mental disorder. 
First of all, how did he buy all that? He got yeah, mental disorder. About what? What she saying? How? Mm-hmm. How? Yeah. It's, it's, th- look at every shooting that happens. It's the same exact story. Mental disorder. Mm-hmm. Hand grenades, smoke grenades. All these motherfuckers has, that's retarded against hand grenades. Mm-hmm. And, and, and the top of the line guns. But, but we, everybody we see that gets shot for real got pistols. But these they got money to buy ARs. Mm. That's how I look at it. Yeah, I get my great. conspiracy from my dad when he passed away. Yeah, I, he he was alive. I never got into it. Okay, but then I realized, yeah, all right, bro. I, mean, I can't believe anything the news tell me. Well, no, we learned that about nine eleven. Inside job. Mm. Just saying. Yeah. Just saying. Hurricane Katrina. Levees ain't fucking fucking the fucking rain ain't blow out the levees. My family from New Orleans, so I get like, you oh, know, okay. So they tell me that shit all. We talk about that all the time, you know. And then these shootings, it's like, come on, man. Like we were talking about that in class. Like this shit here is like, I can't believe half the shit that's on TV no more. Mm-hmm. That's why I don't watch it. But that's that's just me. But we gonna we gonna we gonna talk we gonna talk about what you told me earlier, the medical mission. Mm-hmm. What's up? So what you got going on with that? You said it was in. Africa. Africa. Mm-hmm. Yeah, so I do medical missions to Africa with mm-hmm. an organization called Bethel's Global Reach. It's headed by uh, Marcus Holman, um, who is a pastor. He is the missions pastor over at the Church of Bethel's Family. So we mm-hmm. do medical missions all year round. And the ones I've been um, privileged to go on are the ones to Africa. So we've been serving in Angola and Kenya. So it's amazing. How's and then I've been. <sighs> Absolutely amazing. Yeah. My favorite continent. Really? Oh, yeah. What, uh, what part in Africa you went? Like South Africa, Angola, which is South uh, West Africa, and then Kenya, which is on the East Coast. Really, I always want to go to Africa. You should. The motherland. Mm-hmm. I always want to go. Well, I would tell people, you know, you can't believe everything, like you said, that the media tells you because they would. paint this picture like Africa is just poverty. And, mm-hmm. you know, they show you the little boy with the big old stomach and the flies, but they don't show you the kings and queens. They don't show you the mansions. Nope. They don't show you how amazing the beaches are, how incredible the food is. They don't show you all that. They show you. They tell you when you go out the airplane, it's going to smell like shit. I, they tell you everything you think about elephant shit everywhere. I'm like, yeah, no, lying. come on, man. No. And you know me. I'm some shit. I don't oh yeah, I would tell people, I'm, don't tell me what you heard. Tell me what you know. Like I've been there and I've seen it for myself. I've been there several times, exactly. and oh yeah, it's amazing, absolutely amazing. I want to go. I want. I want to go. Yeah, I, I encourage seen, everybody to go. I seen your Instagram too. Like I said, I do. I do some lurking. Mm-hmm. I do some creeping. I can tell you, you, you free to the world. Mm-hmm. I can tell you like a free going. I'm a free woman. spirit. I see it all the time. I like yeah. that, though. Free yeah. spirit woman. And that's how I'm pretty sure how when you went out to Africa was like that. How long you was out there? Um, Most of the time I go for two to three weeks at a time. Oh, you say you go back, like, often. Well, I go every year. Oh, really? Mm-hmm. What else you been in South Africa? Like, outside country? Outside oh, gosh. Country. India, South America, Asia, all over Europe, Canada, Can you rank Mexico. Them? Can uh, you rank them? Like, so you got Africa number one. Yeah, Africa's number one for me. Who number two? Well, two through five. Mm. Asia. Really? Mm-hmm. What part? Like Hong Kong, places like that. Hong Kong, ain't it like really like it's like congested? A lot of, yes. Yeah, there's a lot of people. I mean, no more congested than India. India is like the, it's like New York on steroids. Really? Oh my God. I thought Hong Kong was worse. What they say it? No, Pfft, nothing close to India. Really? And mm-hmm. hey, you was out there before, right? Mm-hmm. So Africa, Hong Kong, India. So what's yeah. number four? And five. Well, India's not. No, India ain't. Oh, they're not top no, five. No, no. <laughs> what was on India? Um, just not my flavor. I, uh, it's it's a beautiful place. I mean, yeah, it's barely congested. But I mean, India's India. Um, but yeah, I mean, Europe. I love Europe. Europe is a great place. London mm-hmm. is overrated to me. Really? Oh, yeah. Yeah, I think I would never. I think places. Now, I if you want to go, like Paris, Barcelona, Spain, I don't Portugal, go to Paris no more. yeah. I don't want to go to Paris no more. No, nah, that's real shit they doing. ISIS, that's real. They ain't no bullshit. They out they actually <laughs> killing out there. I ain't trying to do that. I ain't trying to be in part that's that's real. Mm. I ain't touching Paris. Every goddamn week is some shooting over there. Mm. I ain't touching that. So yep. Lon- you said London's overrated? Mm-hmm. Really? I think so. I think so. That's just my personal opinion. You I've know, been to London at so least you know, twenty you times. That been out. They go around the country, go around the world so many times. I mean it's a beautiful it's like, place. It's great when the weather's you could, nice. Oh, you could call like ah. I don't like I don't like London. I I'd rather go to Dubai. 
Yeah. You know, we go around the world so much. Miami more. I think places I wouldn't want to go to. I, I think New York is overrated for me. Really? I love New York. I just don't think that people. I mean, me personally, like I. First of all, a couple of things I don't like. I don't like a big crowd. Okay. When I don't like. And see, I'm an extrovert, so I like crowds. I don't like a big crowd. I don't like the cold that much. Okay. You know what I'm saying? And number three, which is like should have been number one to me, I hate rats. Big ass sewer rats in New York. Are you kidding? Them big ass mutants? Yeah, they they are. Motherfucker as big as this damn tape. God, you could put one rat right here. This thing, right? Half, take up half this table. I don't like rats. I know rats is everywhere. I don't like big, like big ass rats. Yeah. You know, like you got to shoot them. You can't just, <laughs> you can't just like walk over like, oh, just, you can know, just another day. Mm-hmm. No, you got to shoot that shit. So that's three reasons why I don't want to go to New York. Congestion, the cold, rats. Okay. And Paris. I don't want to go to Paris. Paris is nice. Too much bullshit going on. ISIS is killing them up. Ain't, ain't, you ain't hear from them lately. Mm-hmm. But it was a point where it was like a lot of Paris is on the news for getting people getting shot up and mm-hmm. ran over. It was people that got ran over by a big ass truck oh, wow. in Paris. It was bad. You don't watch the news a lot, huh? Mm-mm. Yeah, I don't watch it, but it was like so much. You know, you got news on your phone or your iPhone. Yeah, yeah. I see like the headlines and stuff coming yeah. across my phone. But and it yeah. says ISIS attacked in P- Paris, terrorist attack. Somebody got ran over by a truck. It was on YouTube and everything. I said, God damn. People get ran over by army trucks out there. Mm. You know what I'm saying? So I don't want to be, I don't want to see that. But a place I do love, L.A., Miami, of course, New Orleans. Okay. That's like second home damn there. If I haven't been to Mardi Gras, that's weird. Really? I know. I know. I always say I'm going to go every year. But next year I'm really going because I'm going to be graduating in December. Okay. So I'm going to go next February. That's good. For sure, for sure. It's a lot of fun. I'm going to go. So you, you go to, you been to Mardi Gras? Mm-hmm. I've been once. You liked it? Oh, I had a great time. It was fun. Bourbon Street? Mm-hmm. I mean, Bourbon Street is, is great, but. It's cool. That's how I, I, when I, I was out there in August. I mean, yeah. It's like you, you. I'm over bourbon. Yeah. French, you like Frenchman, though? Yeah. Frenchman. Yeah, Frenchman is where it's at. The Bywater area, yeah. Yeah, I was out there in August. So I'm going to ask you, I'm going to ask you this before we get out of here. Black Panther. Mm-hmm. I know everybody, I know everybody in this room going to see Black Panther. Oh, yeah. Eventually. Yeah. But you, uh, what was your thought? What was your reaction when you uh, seen the the trailer when it first came out? Oh, I'm, I love it. All black cast. Some of my favorite actors. I love Lupita Nyong'o because she's from Kenya. Who? Who Lupita Nyong'o. How you said it? Nyong'o. Nyong'o. Mm-hmm. What's the first name? Lupita. Lupita. Mm-hmm. Hmm. So she's one of my favorite actresses. and uh, But, yeah, to see black people as superheroes because, of course, I mean, you know, when you see nothing. Yeah, it's like when you see nothing but white superheroes, it's like, can anybody else save the world other than? So, yeah. yeah. I'm really excited about it. You said something. I know we talked about it earlier. You were Uh talking about the outfits. Yeah, well, I was looking at um, something on, like, you know, uh, Facebook or something, the, the the lady who was designing all the costumes and how a lot of those are modeled after a lot of the tribes in Africa. So mm-hmm. when I was looking at them, I was just like, yeah, you know, I could recognize what tribes mm-hmm. that they came from. So yeah. that's, that's crazy. So the movie, so when I'm not going to watch So it's very it. accurate. Really? Yeah, very accurate depictions. I'm glad that Ron Tomatoes gave him 100%. Because, yeah. you know, they hard as hell on movies. Mm-hmm. I was surprised that yeah. they gave it, like, close to 100%. I'm like, yeah. damn, thank you. Oh, you know, yeah. Recognize. Yeah, you know? I think it's going to be a phenomenal movie. I think so. It, I don't, when, I seen it, when I seen the trailer, and I seen Michael B. Jordan in it, too, because I was the only actor I knew in the movie going into. People knew uh, the main character that's on the front of Time magazine. Mm-hmm. Uh, what's his name? Um, he played in these, He played in the James Brown movie and, and uh, Jackie Robinson. Yeah, yeah. What's I his forget name? his name. What's his name? Damn. Well, the main character. Yeah. You know, people knew him, but I didn't know who that was. And he's getting, like, a lot of, like, pub right now. Mm-hmm. Time Magazine. He went to Howard. You know, so we doing something out here in these streets. Yeah. Yeah. Netflix, yeah, Netflix yeah. is where it's at now. My oh, yeah. My got the Bright movie. And they try to dog that shit. Like, hey, that was nothing. But it was a good-ass movie. Mm-hmm. It wasn't for everybody. It wasn't for everybody. I liked it, though. It wasn't for everybody, though. Oh, okay. Cool. I didn't say it. It was cool. Okay. Oh, you're not really, like, a TV person, though. Not much. So, um, what's, so what's the day in the life for you? Like a twenty-four hours, like a, a day. Um, 
prayer, meditation, working out, yoga. I'm mm-hmm. usually in a coffee shop or a park working if I'm not speaking or at a meeting or on a plane. Like, mm-hmm. so I can count on one hand how many times I watch TV in like a month. Really? Uh huh. That's all like me. Yeah. One I'm, of my damn life. What's that? School. <laughs> yeah. Podcast. Yeah. Yeah. Th- Madden. Mm-hmm. Madden. <laughs> Okay. <laughs> Yoga. Meditating. I drink coffee too. I drink coffee too. Okay. So one day we could probably yoga, yeah, meditate, yeah. you know, go to get go to coffee shop. Yeah. I like tea. So when I go to the coffee shop, I'm drinking tea. I ain't drinking coffee. You ain't drink coffee? Nah. So you go to the coffee shop but don't drink coffee? Mm-mm, drink tea. Really? Mm-hmm. I'm going to I'm 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 write that down. So we go to the coffee shop one day. Yeah, yeah. And get some tea. Yeah. What you looking at, man? What you uh-huh. looking at me for? We gonna see. We gonna we gonna end this show like we gonna end this show off like that. Uh-huh. She, you know, she, she be, the whole day just mess with me. <laughs> yeah, that's why. She, yeah, you want to get in front of the camera, let people see who you. Let people come on. You want to come over here? I'm back here. That's fine. Doing my thing. Mm-hmm. That's what I deal with. That's how we are gonna end the show. Okay. Real deal with a kill. Seneca Dunmore. Yes. Episode nine hundred and twenty-five. We done.